going to be a powerful and explosive study. So as usual, call someone. God will not reject anyone. Jesus wants to make you a new person today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Whispering Hope Daily Sabbath School Lesson Review. And here to help us with our lesson today is Mr. Maurice Tyrell. And today we'll be studying Lesson 10, as I said before, the New Covenant. And today is Sunday. And so we're going to go into our lesson. I'm going to say the prayer and the Tyrell will read to us the memory text today. Amen. Let us bow our heads, eternal God and our Father. We are so thankful for your divine presence with us as we go through this lesson every day. Lord, we know that many persons have been blessed and we pray that you will continue to widen our yes. territory, the number of yes. persons who listen, and that all our listeners will share this wonderful message with others. We pray that as you speak to us this morning, that in turn you will speak to those who listen, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. And the memory text is, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Taken from Jeremiah 31 and verse 31. Okay, so, Mr. Tyrell, we go into the, right into the lesson this morning because we have a lot of ground to cover. And we don't want to go over time. There are a lot of questions. There are four questions as we look into the lesson. It says, Behold, the days are coming. That almost sound like Malachi or Jonah, one of these minor prophets. Behold, the days are coming. But we find ourselves going to Jeremiah. Jeremiah yes. chapter 31, 31 to 34 is our opening text this morning. Yes. And it says, Behold, the day come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand and bring them out of the land of Egypt, Amen. which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. Verse 33 says, But this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. Yes. and write in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people yes. and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor yes. and every man his brother saying yes. know the Lord for they shall all know me from yes. the last of them unto the greatest of them said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. Amen. And yes. I will remember their sins no more. Hallelujah. That is something to shout about this morning. But Elder Tyrant, could you just expound and give us your overview of the lesson? Behold, the days are coming and that opening text. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Uh, among the many things that God mentioned in this text is there, there's a brighter day coming despite what we are going through there is a day coming when he, he would um release us the question who instigates the covenant and according to the text it is god himself and whose lies being talked about here and what lies this it's, it's God's law. It's the law of God. It's Ten Commandments law. And let me just add something here. We There's nothing we can do, think, or say that is not covered by or addressed by one or more of God's commandments. So God's, God's law is all-inclusive. It's all-inclusive. And uh, 
which verse is stress the re relational aspect that God wants with his people? Look at the, la the last two verses. Verses 33 and 34. He spells out in the, the relationship with his people. And then, you know, the question is asked, what act of God in behalf of his people forms the basis of that covenant relationship? And that, that, that comes out in the very last verse. He said he would forgive their iniquity no more. So the act of God in behalf of his people is his forgiveness. He's quite willing to, to forgive, forgive us our sins as long as we admit that we have sins. Elder Tyrell, the question there, which law is he talking about? Is it the Ten Commandments or his, or his word? Is it the word he's writing, all his expressed words, or is it the law, the Ten Commandments? Okay, let me stress here. The Ten Commandments are all-inclusive. Those commandments given by God in his wisdom, he, he addresses every part of our being, everything we ever we were or, or, ever, or ever hope to be. The, as I said earlier, there's nothing that, that human beings can do, think or say, that is not addressed by one or more of those commandments. And I'm going to take the commandments in their totality. You look at the first four verses. They, they, they refer to our, our relationship with God. And then the, the last six directs our attention to our relationship with our fellow men. So there's nothing outside of those commandments that we can do that are not addressed by God. Elder, yes. we are looking today at Behold, the days are coming. Mm -hmm. And he says, this day is coming when I'm going to write the law it's not going to be on two tablets of stone. It's going to be in their mind, in their heart. Correct. When is that day? What, what day is that we're talking about? <laughs> the day is as soon as we accept God as our, as our Savior. He, he inscribes in our mind, in our thinking, the direction in which we ought to go. And that direction is spelled out in his law. So it's the day of acceptance, when we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. That is the day he is referring to. Okay, I'm going to come back to that as well. Now, the lesson is making a statement here. I'm not sure if you concur with it, but it says it is clear. The new covenant is not so different from the old covenant made with Israel at Sinai. Do you conquer? Yes. Yes. The new covenant is fairly, fairly similar to the old covenant because God is, has said he doesn't change. So whatever promise he made uh, initially, any subsequent promise is, um, hinges on and whole or in part on that old or original covenant. Okay, so you know that's a little complicated for my students, so I'm still going to break it down. Okay. Is it that the old and new covenant are the same in any way, uh, in every way? Or is it that the new covenant is a fulfillment of the old covenant? The latter is correct. The new covenant, the new covenant is a fulfillment. Uh, the, the, uh, in what ways? Okay, when, when, when God pledged to his, to his people, and as the lesson brought up, he, he brought them out uh, proverbially by the hand, and uh, he led them through the Red Sea into the Sinai Desert, and he, he made that, that pledge with them. These are, these are the directions which you ought to go with. Refer to, referring to the, the Ten Commandments. Now, those, sorry, those commandments, we, we, we break. And so God has given us a new commandment, a new covenant, sorry, in his son, Jesus Christ, when he, 
He sent his son to die, to, to retrieve us from our sinful nature. And so that the new covenant that was spelt out in the birth and the life and the practices and the death and resurrection of Christ is a fulfillment of the old uh, covenant. Elder, I'm coming to you because I want my, uh, my uh, the followers in the chat this morning and those who will listen to this to <laughs> clearly understand. David says that with all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. Okay. I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Now, in the lesson, it says here, in Jeremiah 31 and verse 34, which we have read earlier, and I'll go over it for the benefit of those following us. It says in verse 34, And they shall teach no more to every man his neighbor, and to every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know, they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquities and remember their sin no more. Why yes. is this whole uh, discussion about sin coming up when David says, thy law have I hidden in my heart, or thy word, that I will not sin against thee? If he is writing it on our heart, why does he have to say that he will forgive our sin and our iniquity? Our iniquity, of the course, is things that we're practicing. How can we be practicing sin when the law is written in our heart? Okay. You see, God has made us uh, independent thinkers. And yes, we are error prone. We are our sinful nature. We know his word, we accept his word, but we are subject and too often we yield to temptations. Mm -hmm. And, and that, in, in, in many areas, was the case of David. While we accept the word of God, we are guided by the Holy Spirit. There are times when we will fall away. What's important, though, is that we must recognize that we have fallen, admit, and ask God for forgiveness. He keeps the door wide open to, uh, to accept us back into his fold. I go down again to Romans because it says here in Romans chapter 2 verse 15. So they show that the work of the law is written in their hearts. Their consciences also bearing witness and their thoughts accusing or defending them. Okay. What is it saying here? Isn't it saying that when the lies in our heart, it, as it were, bears a witness and it's somewhat like a restraint against committing sins? Correct. It is a, it is a restraint. It doesn't necessarily mean, though, that, that we, are, we are foolproof and that we won't yield, we won't sin. The, the law is a guide. It teaches us right from wrong. It teaches us to, to the path on which we ought to go. But because of our sinful nature, there are times when we, we yield to temptation and we divert. But God has left proverbially the door open to invite us back. And that's what, that's what the, the, the text is addressing. It says, the latter part, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So each of us have sinned and come short. So it gives it gives us no no it should give us no pleasure in dwelling on somebody else's sin and faults when we too are equal sinners saved by the grace of God. Right below that is another text, Elder Tyrell, which speaks Matthew five seventeen, and we go all the way down. I think to twenty eight. Twenty eight. It's a familiar text. It says, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. 
For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, I take this in a twofold manner, and in that he has not come to destroy the law, meaning all his revealed words, mm -hmm. which is in the Bible. Okay. But he has come to fulfill that word. But I'm going to ask you a strange part because, question, in that there are many who say today that the law, and this is the Ten Commandment law now, not all the revealed word of God, but it's a part, mm -hmm. is done away with. Mm -hmm. But here is he saying that till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or one tittle shall pass. Reconcile that for me, please. Okay. When I, when I address, or when I hear folks say that the, the, the Ten Commandments have been done away with, my question to them is, is stealing still wrong? Is it okay to tell lies or be a false witness? It, it is, is it okay to kill? And the obvious answer to all those questions is no. So then, which one of the law are you referring to? And it is clear that they are referring to a single commandment, which is the fourth, the fourth commandment. For whatever reason, the, the, the vast majority of humanity has been led, led to the obedience to that fourth commandment. And so we try to find, the, the typical human being attempts to find justification for his or her own, right? So, and then when I look at, at, at the, other, the other verse, it says, whosoever shall break one of the least of these commandments, one, that's the right. first point I wanted to bear in mind, mm -hmm. and teach men so, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom. Correct. Right. And then it's, let us go with that first. What is it saying here? It is saying if we, if we break one of those commandments, we are guilty of all. We would have broken all. Because um, the disobedience to God, irrespective of the, of the infraction, is disobedience. Uh, and, and so we find in, in much of Christendom the emphasis on breaking the fourth commandment. And that is what they're referring to as the law has been done away with. But I might I add here and a, a word of admonition to my Christian friends. There's absolutely no text in the word of God. No text that replaces that fourth commandment. It was good yesterday. It is good today, and it will continue to be good through eternity. Verse 21 says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever mm -hmm. shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. So he's now getting specific and he's pointing directly to the Ten Commandments. So um, mm -hmm. that supports your point earlier. And then it goes down. It speaks about if you offend your brother, uh, you know that your brother have art against you. Let me put it correctly because I can't add or take away from the Bible. It says, therefore, if you bring your, thy gift to the altar and there remembers that thy brother had art against thee, leave thy gift before the altar and go away, go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer that gift. Big talk, Mr. Tyrell. How many of us can do that? <laughs> he didn't say, if I know I did somebody wrong, Mr. Brother Tyrell there is not speaking to me for whatever reason. Mm. I don't even believe I did the elder anything wrong. But he's not talking to me. God says, 
Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. Go and find thy brother and when you set things right, then you can come, you can sing in the choir, you can preach a sermon, you can be the superintendent, you can bring your tithes and offering. But until you have done that, is that what he's saying here? Essentially, yes. However, there, there, there's an extension to that. There's not the, the other the, there's a text that reminds us if thy brother refuses to hear thee, right? You take an, a, a, a companion with you. So in, in, in two years or three years, the, the evidence from the brother could be recorded. And if he continues to refuse, you take it, the issue, to the church. So yes, you would have done your part if you go through the, the steps, all right? And, and, and attempt to solve any problem that you perceive exists between yourself and, and, and the brother. <laughs> this is a lot of gospel. He says, but I say unto you, whosoever, that's the last verse, look mm -hmm. at a woman and lust after her had committed adultery with her in his heart. Mm -hmm. But this is the same mm -hmm. heart, Elder Tyrell. The yes. same heart that the law is written in. So this mm -hmm. man doesn't have to, or woman does not have to physically have an interaction or get to know that person physically. Mm -hmm. But just by t looking at her and lusting at her or lusting at him, they have committed their uh, adulterous act. Correct. Correct. So what was Jesus saying? Well, it, it, it's clear. Um, what Jesus is saying here is we don't have to actually be involved in the actual physical contact. But if the, if the mind gets involved and, and expresses or actually cherishes the thought, it is sinful. Is this out of the issues of the heart? So it is the heart. That's why are we saying then, Elder, can we conclude? after we have read those texts and read the passage that that is why it is essential for the law to be written in our heart because it is in the heart or the seat of the the mind that sin is conceived right. and that's why it is necessary to put the law there that's right that's right you see um when we refer to having it written in our hearts obviously it's not a physical um, writing but it is part of our thinking. It 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 um it consumes the way we think, the way we the way we do things, and and anything that we we want to do, we ought to reflect on how does the love of God addresses or speaks to what we are about to do, or what we are about to think. We came out of last week lesson study in the Sabbath, and here's a question that I have to ask you in the highlighted area he said look at the verse for today how mm -hmm. could you use them to answer the argument that somehow the ten commandments or specifically the sabbath are now void under the new covenant is there anything at all in those texts that we have just gone to this morning, that makes that point? No, it is not. God's word is true forever. God has said in his word that I am the Lord, I change not. So what, what God said yesterday, he's saying the same thing today, and will continue to, to say the same thing tomorrow and forever. Okay, because if, if he were to, to change his word, question is, what would be our standard? His word changed that, so hence our standard is fixed. We have something to, to, uh, to which we are, we are to gravitate, because that cannot change. Okay, as you go to the, what would you say is the essence that we have brought out of the lesson this morning? <laughs> 
the essence, the essence that I gather from the lesson is that as we live today, we, we, we should expect a brighter day ahead, a brighter day coming. However, we ought to prepare for that day when it comes. We can't be like the, the five foolish virgins. We must prepare and maintain a state of, of, of preparation and readiness because it's not a question of if, it is when the day comes, we ought to be ready. I want to share with us this morning one thing. It says, the original premise of the covenant has not changed throughout time, through time. Each time the covenant has been offered, however, humanity with its fallen sinful nature has broken the contract. But God has not given up on us. That's right. He still offers salvation if we choose to accept it. Right. Behold, the days are coming. It was from this context that Jeremiah, the prophet of mourning, had been spirit led by the groundwork to the new covenant provisions and functionality. The divine law was to become etched in the cathedral of the heart. A new covenant priest would become inaugurated above and he would function instead as the Levitical priest. Man. The early sanctuary services would become swallowed up into the messianic and redemptive activity of a better covenant. What's that talking about? Um, Tyrell, I give you the last thing. That's my statement for this morning. Is it saying, dear, that this old covenant of slaw killing doves and uh, as we studied that the covenant was linked to the sanctuary last week and the Sabbath was linked to the sanctuary. And so in the sanctuary, we know that what was happening there is was a demonstration of how God acts out the plan of salvation. Is it saying now that that old covenant, that is what is done away now with because the new covenant has come and Jesus, the lamb slain from the foundation of this world, has fulfilled that old covenant and now that we have life more abundantly in Jesus? The, the, the remission of sins must be evidenced by the shedding of blood. That was laid out very early when God asked Cain and Abel to bring an animal sacrifice. When Jesus came and offered up his life and his blood was shed, his shed blood replaces all the, all the animal sacrifices that, that occurred previously. And his shed blood is spread to cover all of us as we yield our lives to him, as we surrender to him and recognize him as our eternal savior. Oh, the heights of Jesus' love, higher okay. than the heights above deeper than the deepest sea lasting to eternity. And so, marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mounted poured, dear where the blood of the Lamb was spilled, that new covenant. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace. God's God. grace, grace yeah. that is greater than all our sins. Hallelujah this morning. I'm Amen. so thankful that in the garden back there, we find the account in Genesis 3.15 that Jesus promised that he will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. That if, and even though we did the type and the anti-type there in that, 
sanctuary service that the type met anti-type and Jesus came and that veil was broken in two in that earthly sanctuary because now he lives forever to make atonement for my sins and your mm -hmm. sins. All you got to do is accept Jesus today because an enter into a covenant relationship. The song says he's blotting out my sins in the sanctuary. He yes. makes provision for me in the sanctuary. Do you want to make want him make to make provision for you in that sanctuary? Accept oh, yes. the covenant with him. And okay. as you accept the enter into the covenant with him, keep the obligations of the covenant by fulfilling the law. He has the power to give you the victory. Trust Jesus. Yeah. And so as we go out today, we want to say, wear your mask, exercise your social and physical distancing, and always sanitize. COVID is real, and the life you save may be yours or someone you love. But more importantly than that, Jesus still saves lives. Give your life to Jesus today. Have a wonderful day in Jesus, and we want to thank Elder Tyrell for coming in. And this morning wasn't his usual morning, and so he made the sacrifice because the one appointed to was unable to come. I want to thank you for coming by Elder Tyrell. Have a wonderful day.